Hello everyone. Welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So let's start our general indices series. So in this video, I'll be explaining about the basic definition, classification, ideal requisites, and the oral debris index that is OHI and OHIS that is oral hygiene indices. So in the next videos, I'll be covering more uh, periodontal indices, uh, caries indices, and fluoros fluorosis index. So let's see what is an index. Okay, an index is nothing but numbers which are used to find out the incidence, prevalence, and severity of disease based on which preventive programs can be adopted. Or we can say that it is not a definition. We can say that uh, we can express a clinical observation in numerical value. So the most common definition is given by Russell Al. It is a numerical value describing the relative status of a population on a graduated scale with definite upper and lower limit which is designed to permit and facilitate comparison with other population classified by the same criterion methods. So it is nothing but a number which is describing the status of a population. So what is the status, what is the oral health? What is a carry status? What is a plaque status? What is a gingival status? With a graduated scale, just like a scale with graduation, proper markings in between with a definite upper and lower limit. There will be a definite upper limit and lower limit. If it is OHIS, the upper limit is 6, lower limit is 0. And why we are using this? Facilitate comparison with other population. So other population which is classified by the same index we can compare it so comparison between the groups is what index is made for index should be very clear the criteria should be very simple and it should be objective objective means uh, we have subject and object the patient is a subject and objective is the examiner so the rules and criteria can only be decided by the or should be decided by the object so if suppose a patient says or the uh, patient has a different opinion about what you uh, finding in his mouth you can't trust on the patient's words or patient's judgment the investigator or the researcher person has to be the final word and it should be acceptable the index should be acceptable by the patient and there should be sensitivity sensitivity means it should be able to detect the very small change in both the direction if it is very bigger or if it is very low if it has to be uh, detect the minute changes then quantifiability the index should be uh, expressed in numbers and only we can do statistical analysis so it should be a number anyway it is a number because the definition itself says it is a number so index should be always in a quantity so no quality can be measured or compared uh, each, between each groups or between different groups so it is always should be quantifiable and reliability we have different types of reliability that is inter-examiner reliability or intra-examiner reliability so it can be uh, calculated using kappa statistics so it should be um, more than 0.8 or 80 percentage in uh, all the researchers so there should be training and calibration should be done before the actual examination validity means it should measure what it intends to measure so validity we have face validity content validity and construct validity so if it is a questionnaire based uh, index we should may, may, we should always check the face validity content validity and construct validity before we are applying it so these are the ideal requisites of an index that is clarity simplicity objectivity validity reliability quantifiability sensitivity and acceptability so it has many uses if it can be uh, used for individual patients in research in community community can detect the prevalence and in research we need to you know, do a proper uh, examination to find out baseline data and for individual patient we can uh, check the patients before after oral hygiene status or not, something like that so to motivate the patient after the proper instructions we can compare with uh, indices and um, produce the result and make him convinced that uh, the patient has improved 
so what are the classifications so classification is based on the scores fluctuation that is irreversible and reversible irreversible indices are oral hygiene indices plaque indices gingival indices so the scores can be fluctuated if patient has very poor oral hygiene mm, the patient score will be very bad but if he is properly cleaning if properly maintaining the scores will reduce again it will go back to the older scenario that is reversible index irreversible index means dental caries such conditions or periodontal pocket which cannot be reversed depending upon the extent full mouth indices are teens fluorosis index mm, russell's periodontal indices or hi indices simplified are the shorter versions or his that is a simplified indices whereas ohi is a full mouth indices the next classification is disease index based on the entity disease symptom and treatment <coughs> disease is dmft the d portion is disease index symptom index is nothing but a gingival index the presence or absence gingival index or black uh, or the bleeding indices treatment index means the t portion of the dmft simple and cumulative index simple index means a gingival index Cumulative index means which records the past condition also that is DMFT index where the past experience, caries experience is recorded. So criteria are it should be simple, it should uh, permit examination for many people and require minimum armamentarium and expenditure, it should be highly reproducible, it should not cause any discomfort, it should be amenable to statistical analysis and there should be a strongly numerically to clinical stages uh, re relation should be there okay so let's see what is the oral hygiene index so first we are seeing oral hygiene index given by john c green and jacka vermilion in 1960 it is to measure the oral hygiene status of a patient so we divide the total mouth into six category six segments that is uh, we call it as segment or sextant because it is one out of six because we have six segment so we can call it as segment also so this is the first segment which starts from the third molar on the right side up to premolar the second segment is canine to canine here it is premolar to third molar similarly on the lower arch so we have total six arch so what are the rules of oral hygiene index the first one is only fully erupted permanent teeth will be recorded third molars are not commonly recorded the buccal and lingual scores both are taken on a single tooth so one segment so we will be taking all the buccal scores of here from 14 to 18 and whichever tooth is having highest buccal score we will mention that similarly all the lingual score so only one score per segment will be there so here also all the buccal score will be checked and which tooth is having highest so that score will be uh, mentioned again lingual score so one segment having one buccal score and one lingual score so what are the debris criteria so debris is very simple if it is zero means no debris one is one third of the exposed to surface two means it is more than one third but not more than two third three means it is more than two third that is debris score Calculus score also same. Supra and subgingival calculus is there. Zero means no calculus. One is supragingival calculus. One third. Two is supragingival calculus. More than one third, less than two third. But there is addition. If there is, it is not and, it is or. Either one has to be there for giving score to individual flex okay the score 2 is for individual flex of subgingival calculus or supragingival calculus covering more than one third and less than two third either this or either this score 3 is more than two third supra and there should be a continuous band this is a band this is individual flex okay so for giving 3 either one should be there either subgingival continuous band more than two third of calculus so this is how we calculate it has two component what is one is debris index one is calculate index so 
we have buckle score plus cylindrical score divided by number of segments that is always the denominator will be six so we need to calculate the six segments buckle score and lingual score divided by six again six segments buckle and lingual score of calculus divided by six so finally oj is equal to da plus ci so usually debris index and calculus index ranges from zero to six because the maximum score in one segment can be three so let me explain you one segment maximum we get three because out of all these scores the maximum score can be three so all six segments the maximum score will be 18 okay so three 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 similar ling lingual score so 18 plus 18 36 and denominator is six so maximum score can be six and if there is no calculus no debris it will be it will be zero both buckle and lingual if it is zero means zero by six zero six means maximum score three all the segments buckle score six into three eighteen lingual score six into three eighteen so eighteen plus eighteen thirty six thirty six by six six so OHA is addition of d a and c a so this can be zero plus six plus zero plus six so this is a formula so we get 0 to 6 plus 0 to 6 that is 0 to 12 so this is OHI not OHIS so maximum score for all segment can be 36 for debris or calculus just I mentioned 18 plus 18 so higher the OHI poorer is the oral hygiene patient so in OHI we don't have any special category for uh, based on the score so let's see what is OHIS or simplified oral hygiene index the scores are same 0 1 2 3 is same for OHA and OHAs but few modifications or changes are here it is developed in 1964 by the same authors John C Green and Chaka Vermilion and only fully erupted permanent teeth are scored but here instead of checking all the teeth only one teeth per segment is selected it is known as index tooth and natural teeth with full crown restoration and surfaces reduced to height will not be considered so we have index teeth for all the six segments so the first segment is one six one one two six three six three one and four six so all the molars first molars and central incisor and lower central incisor so suppose one six is missing we can take one seven or one eight because it has a similar surface area one six and one five is a different surface area so we don't take it so one one and two one same surface area not one two Similarly, 262738 replacement of second and third molar. This is right or left central incisor. So, here we are checking only six teeth. Okay, there we are checking all the teeth, both buccal and both lingual. And we will be taking only one score of uh, one segment. That is, we check all the teeth, we take only one score out of it. And here also, the difference is for lower 3, 6, and 4, 6, that is. We take lingual surface and both all the rest of the teeth we take buccal or labial surface so only six surface we are checking only three six and four six uh, are lingual surfaces and other teeth are buccal surfaces why because there is a saliva pulling in all these areas here submandibular sub sublingual gland here parotid glands so it naturally it is all clean areas but if it is not clean we need to know we can assume that patient's oral hygiene is not proper so uh, assessing that patient's oral hygiene we check the these teeth because if it is natural cleaning cleansed area is not not even clean it reflects the patient's attitude so this is how we calculate same way or chis one simplified question is added up here same formula or chi is equal to das plus cas TAS or CAS total score by number of surfaces here it will be maximum score of 6, 6 into 3 that is 18 by 6 so we get only 0 to 3 minimum score is 0 maximum score is 3 because total score is either buccal or lingual total we have 6 surfaces so maximum 6 into 3 so that is 18 18 by number of surfaces a 6 so 18 by 6 is equal to 3 so 0 to 3 is the maximum score and OHIS both debris and calculus will come so 0 to 3 plus 0 to 3 that is 
6. So 0 to 6 will be OHIS and 0 to 3 will be debris index or characteristics index because it has only buccal score or lingual score, not buccal and lingual. Okay, so 6 teeth has only one measurement. There we have both buccal and lingual here, only one measurement. For 4 teeth it is buccal and 2 teeth is lingual. That is 3, 6 and 4, 6 are lingual, rest all buccal. So OHI and OHI, uh, DA and CAS has three category, good, fair and poor. It is good means 0 to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 to 1.8 is fair. Poor is 1.9 to 3. OHI is good means 0 to 1.2, 1 1.3 to 3. 3 to 6. This is not exactly the double of this. There is a change here. So this type of uh, category is not there in OHA. This is only for OHA. This is a simplified version. This is very easy to apply in patients or a large group of people. Uh, so OHAs can be uh, used to conduct oral hygiene surveys because it is very easy compared to OHA because uh, it has taking only six surfaces not entire teeth so there actually in OHIS we are taking if it is 32 we are taking entire 32 buccal surface and entire 32 lingual surface so total 64 surface we need to check but only six uh, six scores will be there because only one tooth uh, per segment but both lingual and buccal score but here we are not checking entire teeth only six teeth are checking instead of 64 surfaces and also here there is no buccal lingual on the same tooth on either buccal or lingual so only six surfaces we are checking in OHI we are checking actually 64 surfaces so 64 surfaces and six surfaces have huge difference and they have a clear indication of why we are checking these surfaces. I told you regarding the uh, saliva pooling and patient's hygiene, patient's attitude. So that's all about OHA and OHAs. It is very important in our practical sessions and for the university practical exam. This is the compulsory uh, index all students must follow. So I'll come up with uh, DMFT and DMFS. Uh, in my next session and then uh, CPI indices, CPI TN and Russell index and finally fluorosis index. So I'll come up with DMFT and DMFS. Okay. Thank you.